It has led many people to become, and I say this word, enslaved to society and people. After Islam, Islam liberated us a long time ago from being enslaved by people. A long time ago Islam did this. Yet today we find that slavery has changed its form. Still the same, but it's just changed its form. People are enslaving people through this idea that you must look good, you must be like this, you must be look in this certain fashion, this certain appearance for you to be accepted. And so they have succeeded in many worlds. As a result, we find new diseases, like, well, psychological diseases developing which lead to death, such as anorexia, talked about all over the news, which leads to bulimia, which, and also some people are so worried about their figure that it's even led them to the opposite of anorexia and that's obesity. When you become bulimic, you start craving food more. And then because you feel guilty, you vomit it out. Right? You force your body to vomit out, which leads to problems in your liver and so on. Or some of them, they keep eating and eating and then it becomes a habit to eat more and so they get obese. All a result of trying to satisfy people with their figure. Tragically, death happen has happened to many of them and suicide has become the major consequence of such victims. This is everywhere. This is not from me. Look it up. Just Google it and you'll find all this information. It's caused many Muslims to spend endless hours in front of the mirror and in their wardrobes, spending huge amounts of money and wealth just so they can look good and be complimented by people and friends. How sad that is really, to come to that state that you need to go to that state where you're going to spend all your wealth, all your money and your tiresome hours which you have, could have spent to you know, build up your hereafter and be in paradise forever with enormous beauty that no one can ever imagine just so that people can say something good about you today. Just so that you can go out and come back home and say, well, I got compliments today at the shop. I got compliments today as I was walking on the street. Just so that you can get that compliment. That's really, I feel sorry, really sincerely for people who have resorted to that. Because my dear sister or brother, you are higher than that. Allah has elevated you above that. You don't need, you don't need people's perceptions about you because it will not bring you forward nor backwards. In fact, actually I said backwards, it actually will bring you backwards and you will have to become a slave to these people trying to satisfy them and you will forget the unique qualities that Allah has given you which you could have used. It's not all about beauty on the outside people, really, seriously. I know that you might love or be attracted to a certain individual who you want them to love you back and so you, you want to sort of appear so nicely attractive and alluring to them? Don't. Don't, my dear sister or brother. Because if that person will only be lured by attractiveness, they cannot be the right spouse for you. They are not the right spouse for you. There are others who will be attracted to you, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows are better than what you actually think is good. Allah says in the Qur'an, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُوا شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ it may be that you hate something when it's actually better for you. So don't limit yourself to something that you think is the best for you. How many men have married women that in their eyes, in the eyes of most people, they're extremely attractive? Only to be divorced a few months later. But she's attractive, they should last forever, right? But they don't. How many women have married men who are mashallah, you know, to their eyes so muscular, so handsome athletic body high cheekbones and all of that stuff and then a few months later they hate the day that they married them or even met them we hear this a lot we hear this a lot my wife tells me this, she hears this a lot from sisters and I've got, you know, extremely handsome men who lots of girls would have wanted them beforehand so what is it that really is your beauty and really is your image? I'll answer that in a minute. But firstly, I believe that the work, this type of work to make you feel this way is the work of evil people who are enemies to Islam. Yes? Enemies to Islam. You might say, oh, typical of you. Everybody comes up, you know, if you're a religious person loves Allah, you always say, everyone's an enemy to Islam. No, I really mean it's an enemy to Islam because you have to look at what Islam actually means. 
What is Islam? They're actually enemies to all of humanity. But I'm talking about the meaning, literal meaning of the word Islam. Islam means that you only submit and you only surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decisions and laws. All you want to do is to please Allah first. So they are causing you not to please Allah first, but to please people. To submit to people. To surrender to the world of men. Sisters first. And men, to surrender to the world of marketing and to also attract women and so on and to get into all this stuff. They want you to forget about the atrocities in the world, the slaying of innocent lives, the political world, and the more important issues in life. If they can ruin your mental state and make you forget who you are, then they have succeeded and will always remain in power, oppressing people and causing aggression. That's all they want to do, brothers and sisters. And they have managed to do that, to, sadly, to a lot of our brothers and sisters. And you must be more aware about that because the Qur'an has made you extremely conscious. My dear sisters and brothers, what is Islam? Islam is a way of life. Which your creator, your beautiful creator, your beautiful fashioner, chose for you to lead a peaceful and healthy lifestyle, physical lifestyle, a beautiful mental lifestyle and an appropriate spiritual lifestyle. It guarantees your reputation. Islam guarantees for you to have a good and respectable reputation and elevates your self-esteem if you follow it correctly and passionately. I'm going to give you some examples inshallah later on to illustrate this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that if you do so, you will have a prosperous life. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ati'u Allah wa rasul wa rasul idha da'akum lima yuhiyikum. O oh, you who believe, respond to Allah and His Messenger when He calls you to that which gives you a prosperous life. Islam gives you a prosperous and beautiful life. Iman is your beauty. Iman is your inner spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your faith and your reliance upon Allah. Your trust and belief in Allah and whatever He revealed and recommended. So if He tells you you're beautiful, that's all you need to know. That Allah has acknowledged that for you. If you have proper Iman, if you have strong Iman, no one is going to be able to destroy your self-esteem. No one's going to be able to destroy your morale. No one will be able to take control of you. Because you see, I met, well I didn't meet them, but at the Preston Masjid these two girls from Ataif came along to interview us to see what Islam thinks about women wearing their hijab and why. And one of my arguments that I explained to them was, I said, did you know that every single being on the face of the earth whether they have a religion or don't have a religion, whether they have a way of life or don't have a life, believe in God or don't believe in God, they are a slave and servant to someone or something. You have to be. If you're not, you're the person who would commit suicide because you will feel that you have no purpose in life. They said, how? I said, well, you see, do you still dress like the 60s? She said, no. I said, why not? What's wrong with the 60s? I said, well, you know, society doesn't accept it today. You've got to get with the fab and the fashion. I said, wallah, who, who dictates your fashion now? What if you do want to dress like the 50s and say, what's wrong with that? She goes, yeah, I can, but, you know, it can't be accepted in society. I said, so you're a slave to society. That's, that's all I can say. Yeah. They nodded their head and they said, well, that, that makes sense. I said, do you, are you happy every morning you have to get up and... You have to make sure that you're not wearing the same dress as yesterday or the same pants as yesterday. You can't have the same color lipstick as yesterday because everybody has already seen it and so on and so forth. So it's true. One of them said, I have about 50 pairs of shoes. You know, you know, I don't know what you call your shoes, sisters, but they have special names. And said, you know, I didn't have to spend all my money for that, but only to impress people and to get a job and so on and so forth. Well, if you have your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're a slave to Allah, all of this doesn't matter to you. What? People are going to dictate what I'm going to wear now, how I'm going to speak, how I'm going to walk, based on what they see in the media and based on what they see in models who are fake anyway. Listen to what Allah says about a person who has iman. He said, Man amila, man amila 
موسى وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه حياة طيبة Whoever of you does good deeds among you let them be male or female while they have true iman while they have true iman true belief in God and reliance upon him then we shall grant them in exchange a prosperous and happy life Wallahi you will you'll be happy you'll not be unhappy